just find that um, in Nahanchi or, or Tekikata either. You, you see it at the start and end of quite a few kata as well, but it's such an efficient movement. So first part, as we say, we're, co we're covering up to protect ourselves from strikes as they come flying in. So I, I've, I've, I've lost control of the fight, I'm no longer in charge, he's swinging shots, I have no idea what's going on, so I cover him from there and I just kind of crash in here. Whatever that's coming at me, I just crash in. Once I've got, so I don't get hit, right? You know, I'm moving in, taking away his range. Once I've got that, I just want you to flip your hands around the back of his head. So if we just keep the arms down for the second, imagine these arms are still be flinging all over the place, but you want the hands overlapped on the back of his head here, still as it is in the kata, yeah? Your forearms want to run down the front of his shoulder. What that means is, if, he, if you swing a few headshots towards me from there, they're not particularly powerful shots, because he, because he can't turn his shoulders into it. He can still get a reasonable body shot in. You know what I mean? But, but still not, and he can still maybe tag me with the odd headshot. But they're not going to be powerful because he can't get the rotation that he needs. And I'm not going to be there for long anyway. Right? So that's, that's what I'd like you to do now. So we're still working on the first part before this bit. Um, don't need to lock your fingers. That's a big, big no-no. And don't clasp your hands together like this either. That could work fine as a fighting clinch. We, we want the hands so that they can pivot the same as they do in the kata. So we need the hands overlapping. Another common mistake is don't have your hands like that. Okay, because if, if you do that for me. If he's got his hands kind of like this, I can just burst out the back of it. What you want is he wants his hands overlapping like that. So as I try and move out, it's hard to get rid of. Not impossible, but it's hard enough that he'll have a chance to do something bad. Okay, and make his escape. Is everyone okay to give that little go? So you're going to uh, cover in, just gather up the neck, okay? And just wait from there for the next part. I just, okay. one, just one question. What about avoiding being headbutted by him? But you're one step ahead. Right, because... Oh, well, sorry, now. Right, you know, in some versions of the cat there, it does this bit, which we'll come to in a moment. But then what it also does is this bit. The head turns left and right. So Wado does that, Shorin Ryu do that, they get to there and it goes all the way this way and all the way the other way. Which is often said, oh you're looking for the enemies, which I like that idea that I'm standing still thinking, okay where are you, I know you're out there somewhere. But the idea is exactly that, to, it's to stop biting or headbutting as well. One thing you do is if this hasn't worked, and we'll get to that in a moment, it's saying grind your head. So one of these when I'm here is I put my head against his head and then just turn. So now we can't headbutt me because my head's pinned against his head. It also means he can't bite me now. However, I can headbutt him and I can bite him. <laughs> right, so when I'm there, if I've if I gone there, I can pull my head, bang, 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 I can, I can do that. I can also bite. I'm not biting to take chunks off him. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm biting so he goes, whoa, and when he moves away from me, it creates space to strike. Okay, you know what I mean? So I'm not looking to bite and sever, I'm just looking to freak him out a little bit. But you know what I mean? So I clamp my teeth on this, like this, and yeah, he moves away. As he moves away, it gives me a chance to escape and strike and all that kind of fun stuff. Does that answer your question? But yeah, if, yeah, if, if, you get, if you get in the grip and try it as well. Because yeah, you're, never, you're never invulnerable. You know, he, he could get a headbutt off, but it's not going to be strong. Because to get a good headbutt, you need to get your body into it. And he can't do that because my arms are here. Yeah, it doesn't need uh, to be a good headbutt. It's, uh, oh, it's still be a headbutt. Uh, if he strikes my nose or some, uh, just a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Make, yeah, if he, if he, well, he can make... See, this is... Uh, this is an interesting one because two of Funakoshi's teachers uh, had radically different views on this. So Azato, one of Funakoshi's teachers, said, treat your opponent's hands and feet like swords. Never get hit, ever, in any way. And, and Itosu's view was along the lines of, well, if he doesn't knock you out, it doesn't count. You know what I mean? His weak blows don't matter. So, so and for me, it's, it, 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 this, the, there is, it would be an incredibly good day when I didn't get hit at all when I'm defending myself. So my trick is to make sure that my hits are effective and his are weak. So, so you're right, you know, I mean, like if he did manage to go bang and hit me in the nose, it'll make my eyes water, it might make it bleed. But, as you'll see, you know, he, he can do a weak one, I can, bang, I can knock him out with mine. You know, and I've got all the elbows and the neck crank and all the fun stuff that comes after that. But it's always, it's a really good point, because it's always good to be mindful of what they can do so you're anticipating it. So, swings in with his shots, cover in from there, get in, gather the head up. If you want to have a little play at grinding the head in, that's fine. If you want to put some little head butts in, that's fine too. So long as you control them. <laughs> right? And then we'll look at that part in a second. Okay, because I cut their options. Can't say that's option A, controlling his head is option B. If you do option A, he won't be able to headbutt you, which we'll see in a second. Is that okay? 
So you yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, I can do this. I bring the hands to there. What I then do is just follow the cutter through as I push through and down the gap, which is why it's important to have the hands like this, so the hands can pivot. Okay, they can pivot through. So once I've got into there, I bring the hand to there, push through and down and move to here. Right, what that'll do is again, that gives me my chance to either finish with some kind of strike, or to run away, or then strike and then run. Right, so, so uh, even if he grabs hold of me too. So if I, I've got a crash in here, and he gets hold of me in some way, so it takes a nice tight grip. If I can get my hands to there, once I start pushing his head down, his grip tends to come loose. Because he has the choice of, you know, if I maintain the grip, the pain gets worse in my neck. Because I'm pushing his chin into his chest and applying pressure here. So it stretches the vertebrae on the back. You know what I mean? So, and of course I'm doing it very gently now and you should in practice too. But if it's done with any degree of force, it's not that he thinks, oh, I better move. It's, it's a, a, a reaction to the pain, an involuntary reaction. Like when he touched something hot. So he suddenly feels pain in his neck and he just lets go and bends. When he does that, you've now escaped that grip and you're ready to kind of strike and flee and run away in some way. So to me, it's right that the kind of begins with this because there's your fight over right there. Don't get hit, escape. You know what I mean? It's just in that one kind of move, you've, you, you've got it. So the idea being in again, he's swinging in his shots, I'm running and crash, I get my grip, I might put my own little bits of dirt in here. This would be, you see how his head's forwards a little bit? Perfect time to do it. Bring my hands to here, push down and move away. Right, once he's there, again, some kind of strike as you move and then run. Striking the legs can be useful because it limits his ability to run after you. Um, but for, again, we've got that motion. If that doesn't work, then we can hit him with everything else in the cat and we're going to look at that in a moment. But is everyone okay with that, that first part of it as well? One other thing to note is with the way that the, the cutter does it, when it brings the arms up from there, you see how the hands are this way around. So if you just uh, bring the arms up to there. So what you've got there is you've got the hands are this way. Most people are right-handed. So if you think about it, this side here needs to be the strongest one. Because this is where the, most people are going to be striking from. So because he's got one hand behind the other here, as I strike this way, it's stronger on this side than it would be on this side. This side is double braced, this side is single braced. <clears throat> so to me, I don't think it's an accident that the hands are that way around as opposed to this way around. It's all, most people are, 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 are right-handed, so let's protect against the right. Let's make the right-handed shot strongest as opposed to the way around. So anyway, that's the technique. Guy swings in with his shots from there. Okay, I get in from here, I work. I can grind with the head if I need to. Put my little shots in, hand goes to here, push away. Once you're there, some kind of finishing strike and then you escape. Is everyone okay to do that a little bit? Okay, lovely. And then we'll play with the rest of the cannon because that's what will, what if this doesn't work? Because nothing's guaranteed to work. You always need a plan B. Okay, lovely.